this in Zion became songs of worship. So when you came into their meetings, there is no way. They didn't have the keyboards we have now. They just had men whose hearts the Holy Spirit had turned into stringed instruments. So when the words came, they didn't come from their emotions. They came from the Holy Spirit playing upon the strings of their hearts. That's why even when we die, those their songs will still be powerful. Some of you now have moved into another realm in the spirit by a simple song. But this morning when you went to church, all you sang was carry me, they go, they go, where my blessing, they call my name. And nothing happened in your spirit. Nothing happened. Those of us who are in Zion, we must come back to the place where we sing the Lord's songs. We need to go and dust our hymn books again and sing simple songs. Songs that were written by people who had an experience in Adulam. Who met Jesus on Zion. Men who were in debt. They, they looked for David. They broke fellowship with Saul. Every one of them broke fellowship with Saul. And they sought David out. Even though he was in Adulam, they went to find him. Everyone who was discontented. I looked up that word. That word is the Hebrew. Mara. M-A-R-A. -A. That is where the word Mara comes from. M-A-R-A-H. And you know the word Mara. What it means is bitterness. Everyone who was bitter in their soul. They gathered to David. Bitterness of soul. You know, it's easy to deal with an injury on your body. If what you have is a cut, people like Pastor Goodluck's wife can bring stitches and bring some repair to your cut. But if the pain is in your soul, who can heal it? Who can heal it? That is the kind of pain you don't have words to describe. You just find yourself crying. Just find yourself crying. You don't have words. It's, it's called the bitterness. Also, men that felt like that, they immediately broke fellowship with Saul and they sought union with David. And when you read this, everyone, 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 you will now think there were plenty. The Bible now gave us their number. Only 400. You mean in all Israel, these were the only 400 who were in the condition to find David. <laughs> Salvation is available to all, but only a few will receive it. The Bible says he came to the world. The world knew him not. He came to his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God. Just the way Jesus was rejected, that's how they rejected David. And all the men that were considered rejected went to find David. I'm praying that before, before we go further on this discipleship series, you need to ask yourself, have you broken fellowship with Saul? Have you broken fellowship with Saul? And you know, the Bible is very graphic. In this scenario, David represented Jesus. Saul represented Satan. At this time, even though David was the anointed one, he was rejected of men. At this time, even though David was the anointed one, he didn't have the throne. Saul was sitting on the throne. No wonder the Bible says in 1 John 5, I think it's verse 19. It says, the whole world lieth under the control of the wicked one. Have you read that before? I think it's 519. Help me, media. 1 John 5, 9. Is it 19? Yes, help me. We know that we are of God. And the whole world lies under the sway of who? 
Satan is the one in charge in this realm. He's the one in charge. The structures that are working, what we call the system of the world, are governed by Satan. He saw and he's sitting on the throne. This is why in Revelations, when worship broke out, the joy in heaven was that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. That's one of the victories that will be at the end of the age. Before the entrance of the new Jerusalem, there will be the conquest of the kingdoms. Those kingdoms will be brought out of the hand of Satan, who has been prince of this world. He will lose his title because it will be time for David to ascend the throne. David. But that's not where I'm going. David took all these men that were oppressed. Took all these men that were in bitterness of soul. Took all these men that were debtors. And the Bible says he turned them to mighty men. Hi. And if you notice, it's the same pattern that Jesus followed. How did David turn them? He brought them into proximity. Just the way Jesus brought the disciples. By association, men who were debtors became mighty men. Some could wield swords. Some could wield spears. spears. Some could hurl stones. Some were skilled in warfare. Discipleship. But now you can come to David and make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior and be in a place for 15 years. You will not know how to win the battles of life. You will know about breakthrough. You will know about how to share testimonies of how to travel abroad. You will know how to emphasize your economic position. But you won't know God. You won't know the Son of God. Salvation is not the end. Salvation is entrance into reality. It's because you are saved, you can now be taught. It's because you are born again, you can now be introduced to divine life. Because God cannot take your old nature and improve on it. Alamakwanakaya. Because what the old nature is run is full course. Don't be angry with me. I'm telling you the truth. Have you bought pear before avocado? How many people have eaten avocado? When it starts to rot in, you can't stop it. All. Are you with me? There is no technology to stop it from getting rotting. When it starts rotting, the only way to save that pear is to cut off the rotting part. Hmm. Are you with me? It's the only way. If you leave that rotting part and you are pampering it, it will spread to the entire fruit. So the Bible says that even the whole earth is groaning because they've entered into a state of corruption. The death of Jesus could not reverse it. Corruption will run its full course until the day of what? Manifestation. It's when the day of manifestation comes that corruption will be swallowed up. The old will be rolled away like a blanket and a new will be brought in. That's what happens at salvation. God cannot take your old life and work on it. Corruption has set in on that life. So he cannot begin training with that life. The first thing he needs to do is to get rid of corruption. So he takes the old life and gives you the new life. It is that life he cannot work with. If you are going to arrest corruption, the Bible says if your eye causes you to sin, what should you do with it? Pluck it out. Get rid of oh, melamanakaya. Once corruption has started, it cannot be stopped. Because everything that is in this realm lies under the control of the wicked one. David turned men in debt, men in reject, men that were rejected, men that were in bitterness of soul. He turned them into mighty men. Now you cannot read the Old Testament and not talk about David's mighty men. Huh. The Tacomite. 
You can't talk, talk about the Bible and not talk about those men. They were like immortals. Yet, all they did was to come to Zion. They came to Adulam, became associated with David. And all of a sudden, a transition began. I need to ask you tonight, has your transition begun? How long have you been around Jesus? What have you become? What have you become exactly? What have you become? And you see, that thing is not accidental. Because I'm going to teach you five principles for discipleship. Fellowship, growing in grace, growing in, uh, in the knowledge of God. I will show you. Training by the grace of God as the Holy Spirit helps me. I will show you. Probably we'll begin next week. I just wanted to show you the background. This is the architecture. Go back to Ephesians 4 now as I want to tie up. This is the architecture. Whether Old Testament or New Testament, you don't see great men accidentally becoming great men. There is a season of tutelage, of training. And that is what the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the shepherd teachers are supposed to do. Train! Train! Develop! So that you too will live Adulam as a man that is a man of war. But now we have people who have been in Adulam for years. They came discontented till now. 13 years, they have not changed. The bitterness in their soul is still raw. And yet when you will see them, they have money in their bank account. And the gifts that God gave to equip and to edify, to equip the saints so that the saints can edify. The gifts that God came. Instead of those gifts to begin to tell them, oh boy, not be sure it's supposed to be, oh. they are pampering them, massaging their, their, their lust, encouraging their foolishness. Checking whether you've been in church for 15 years. If you, if you, if you don't give tight, we will not baptize your child. If you don't, if you don't, if you, if you are not regular in church every Sunday, you will not take communion. What, what, what rubbish? What rubbish? And yet the person that we are talking about does not, has not come into the knowledge of the Son of God. He has not become, has not grown up to be a, a perfect man. That's why we are anointing people as, as ministers who are sleeping around with people's wives. That's why we are making people pastors and the only qualification for them to be pastors is that they have money to spend. When you put them side by side with the stature of Christ, they can't measure. They don't know God. Let's go further. 14. That we should no longer be what? If you read it in the old King James, it says infants. Babes. And one of the signs of a babe is that he's tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. People are on Facebook arguing about miracle money. Who did this thing to us? Now that there's no cash, now that there's no cash, why are they not on the street sending you miracle money? Why? Babylon has swallowed a generation. Miracle money. And some of us believers are the ones defending this nonsense. Miracle money. Infants, every wind of doctrine that comes, the basic grace of discernment my generation does not have. We can't tell the difference between a thief and an apostle. We can't tell the difference between a sorcerer, a soothsayer, and a prophet. We don't know the difference. And it's the lost, the lost of Babylon. Children. Do you know the, one of the basic the signs of a child is that the child, his position is always, give me, give me. I want, I want. As you mature, your give me will reduce. Your post posture will now be a posture of taking responsibility. 
go to our services. Monday to Sunday, we are begging God to give something. What have you given to God recently? What sacrifice have you put on the altar recently? Recently. 